America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. Mr. Rogers passed along friendship, hoping we would too. Friendship. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at Values.com. Blaylock Dialysis Center is a convenient state-of-the-art dialysis center in the Houston area, run by Dr. Panakin Patel. Relax in a comfortable environment while receiving quality care. Serving adults 18 to geriatrics, we are here to help you. Call 713 463 6611 for more information or visit us at our website at www.blaylockdialysiscenter.com. Blaylock Dialysis Center, where helping you get well is our priority. Do you like to meditate? Have you tried to meditate? Have you struggled with meditation? Why don't you visit one of the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Center? Visit brahmakumaris.org. Hello, this is Kristen Hoffman, and it is with great love, joy, pleasure, and spirit that I am listening to America Meditating Radio Show. The Meditation Museum in Silver Spring, Maryland, offers a variety of courses and activities to make your life go a whole lot smoother. Located at 9525 Georgia Avenue, you will be able to experience the beautiful silence that's in the space, There are courses in Raja Yoga Meditation, Positive Thinking, Stress-Free Living, and Personal Development classes. For more information, call us at 301-588-0144 or visit us online at meditationmuseum.org. Hello, everyone, and welcome to America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Jenna. We're always glad when you can join us because you've got such a multitude of options and I've often known that if you've got too many choices, then you get stressful. (laughs) But one of the good things is that not only are we so authentic and truthful to our call conversations, we have seen an incredible building of beautiful relationships over the years and incredible stories of how well we have understood ourselves and are growing more into ourselves and speaking into our future, like using our present time to speak into our future, speaking into our power is so important. And that's what the America Meditating Radio is all about. Well, if you're like me and you are approaching your beautiful stage of antiquity, things start to get all unique. Things just move around, your body moves around, your face moves around, and everything sort of changes. And I guess we start to really question if um, beauty is something external or internal. And if you've ever met an elder person who seems to be extremely joyous, you just always say to yourself, that's how I want to age, that's how I want to grow, that's that's the way I want to live my life, you know. And then you ask, how did they get like that? What was the implementation? What was the practice? How were they as people? And I could only assume because it's a path that I've so tried to use and apply in my day-to-day life is to really be a person who doesn't give sorrow, and I try my best not to take sorrow. And so the importance of maintaining a consistent mental state that's not polluted by unfulfilled expectations, negativities, uh, jealousies, competition, regrets, wishing that I had what maybe the other person had or wishing that I didn't do what I did, waste. To me, they're just a waste of energy a waste of consciousness, and if you joined my tweet on America Meditate Twitter handle, I sent out a quote yesterday, and by the way, everyone in my Twitter handle, 85% of folks on my Twitter actually know them personally, so it's not that it has to be of high numbers, but I always talk to my friends who call me and go, Sister Jenna, can't we get your Twitter handle up? I go, you can try, but 
my relationships are really heart to heart, genuine, you know. I could call any of those people in a second and so um do what you wish, but just to let you know, yesterday I tweeted, be mindful of the thought space because they do matter. And so what if our thoughts were very beautiful? Imagine what the vibration and the atmosphere of that space would look like. And despite if I'm in my 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s, my great-grand-aunt, Daddy Janky, who is my spiritual mentor and my everything that brought me onto my path of enlightenment, is 100 plus. And go and Google her and look at how she looks. Or just go on even the Meditation Museum Facebook and look at that lady at over 100 partying. Partying, and she says her makeup is her love for God and her love for others. Join us because we're going to talk to cover model and makeup artist Cindy Joseph, who is the founder and CEO of Boom, <laughs> an exciting concept in makeup that reveals women's genuine beauty. Before we get Cindy on the line, I'd like to take us into just a little bit of meditation so we can amplify our inner beauty. So let's rise above and become that being of energy. Breathe in deeply. Rising above, taking just a minute, I imagine stepping into a hot air balloon, the balloon slowly lifting up into the blue sky. Looking down, I see the picture of my life. Any problems seen? so small. I take this moment to enjoy silence, peace, and to rest my mind. As the balloon gently descends, I return to my day with a quiet and peaceful mind. Welcome back. That was Rising Above from Just a Minute, meditation CD by BKJNT. Cover model and makeup artist Cindy Joseph is the founder and CEO of Boom by Cindy Joseph, an exciting concept in makeup that reveals a woman's genuine beauty with an honest and realistic approach. In addition to running her Boom empire, Cindy is represented by ICAS for special bookings, including her 2016 Chico's campaign and five-year worldwide Nivea campaign outside the U.S., her face has graced covers and pages of Oprah, Glamour, Mademoiselle magazines, and European and Japanese fashion and beauty magazines. It's amazing the work that this incredible lady has done over the years. She points out that it's time to throw out the archaic anti-aging point of view and step into the powerful realization that every woman can have fun, passion, wisdom, sensuality, and beauty throughout her entire life, not just halfway through it, but all of it. So her message is energizing and inspiring women of all ages to raise their consciousness and confidence in relation to not only their age, but their size, color, and shape. Cindy speaks about these subjects and more on her weekly video blog, Saturdays with Cindy and TED Talk. Today we welcome Cindy Joseph to the America Meditating Radio. Hi, Cindy. Welcome to the air. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for such a wonderful and thorough introduction. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, you're thorough, aren't you? I mean, how was it feeling for you? I mean, were you always like this, or was it just that you were walking on the street and this someone said, you need to be in pictures? I mean, how did it all start for you? Well, I was a makeup artist in the fashion industry working on photo shoots with, you know, all the supermodels and celebrities of the time for about 25 years. And nobody ever asked me in the studio to model. I was out on a street in New York talking to a girlfriend, and I was approached by a casting agent looking for somebody to put in a Dolce & Gabbana worldwide campaign. And they walked up to me and said, oh, can we take your Polaroid? <laughs> and I thought it was a joke. I thought somebody in the business was playing a trick on me. And um, it was the real deal, and it started my 16-year modeling career at age 49. That's so fantastic. You know, and at 49, we're like, so where were you at 49? Like, were you still being a makeup artist for people? 
Yes, I was uh, continuing my makeup career and um, looking at my lifestyle, I moved out of New York City, decided to live in a group. The old um, flower child from the 60s was still (laughs) alive and well. Love it. (laughs) And, you know, it takes a village. So I thought, okay, Uh I'm going to walk my talk and I'm going to actually do it. And I moved into a communal situation up in Yonkers and lived there for four years. And while I was living there... This is when this, you know, big career change happened. And I was thinking, you know, I feel like I've done everything I wanted to do with makeup and in the industry and travel and I'm kind of ready for something new and different, but I didn't know what it was yet. So I was feeling like a transition was going to happen. I just didn't know exactly what it was. And I was, you know, about to turn 50 and I was feeling healthier than I'd ever been, happier than I'd ever been, more fulfilled than I'd ever been. So I was really looking at life and the messages that I had received all my life about aging and none of it was fitting it was like I kept you know being told things were going to get worse and things were actually getting better meaning myself you know I was becoming wiser and had more self-knowledge I was more tuned in to nuances and you know as everyone knows the longer you live and the more you experience the more you know Zhush, you get. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Everything. You do, and I think that many women need to know that because I think they get a little bit anxious, scared. If they're freshly divorced or if they don't have a partner, they f- feel scared of growing old alone. And all of these thoughts begin to weigh them down, and <clears> they forget to use their thoughts in a way that can lead them to their boom. You know, like you have now yeah. started your company, Boom, and I'd love for you to share with our listeners how does your skincare and cosmetic line differ actually from the others that we see out there on the market? Well, it all started with a very young man asking me about creating a cosmetic line. He said, you were a famous makeup artist and now you're a famous model. You could put that together and create a cosmetic line. And I looked at him and I said, there's enough lipstick tubes in the world. We don't need more makeup. <laughs> and, but it got me to thinking about you know what makeup represents and how all the cosmetic lines, if they're for ladies at lunch or the girl next door or the ass athletic woman or the businesswoman, they all are anti-age. They're all against age. Age is bad. We don't want to see it. We don't want to hear about it. We want to conceal it. We want to cover it. We want to camouflage it. And that was it. I said, bingo, I am going to create a pro-age cosmetic line. And the Uh message is age is beautiful. And every Mm. stage of life brings another kind of beautiful From the newborn baby to the toddler to the adolescent to the teenager to the pubescent to the adult woman, the young adult woman, and on and on. And we have pictures of people who are 100 years old on our walls that we stare at in awe because they're so incredible. But then we look in the mirror and we see one little wrinkle and we freak out. Yeah, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm really now going to look forward to my aging process. And, you know, whenever anyone sees me, they go, oh, gosh, you still look like 20 or 30. I go, go, girl. But that's not the point. The point is, and again, I go back to what I shared earlier in our conversation or in the interview. It's this internal beauty that, you know, stuff is going to go through entropy. Your body is going to go through entropy. And we do need to honor that. And I'm saying this, Cindy, with respect to my brothers and sisters who go the Botox way, the facelift way. If you need to do it, fine. But I just want to emphasize the importance of making your inner self more beautiful than your outer self because when that inner vibration inside of you is vibrating a hundred times more than your physical beauty people don't even see physically what you look but they the way that you should look does that make sense yeah i think that if you're doing it to look attractive and beautiful it's not going to work i think if Mm. you are really learning to love yourself and cherish yourself and watch out for yourself and have a loving relationship with yourself, then you have that inner strength and that inner love. And I don't think you have to worry about what it looks like on the outside. 
And when we're little kids, you know, we can't wait to get older. We're really excited about the next year. We have hope for the future. We see the future as bright and exciting, and it's going to bring more adventures and more capabilities and more skills. And that continues for your entire life. I have a photographer friend that met a man who won a gold medal in the Masters Olympics. And when he was 99 years old, he met a fitness trainer. And he was hunched over and he was very frail. And they met at a party and the fitness trainer started asking him questions and discovered that he had no illness. There was nothing wrong with him. He had basically been a couch potato. And he said, why don't you come down to the gym? Let's see what we can do. And three years later, he won a gold medal at the Masters Olympics. So even at 99, you can do miraculous things with your body. So there are a lot of things going on that we don't even know about. And I remember when I was a young woman, I read a National Geographic magazine. It was printed in 1973, and they did a study on the oldest people in the world. And they found three communities of people with a very high percentage of centenarians. And they interviewed people 117, 130 years old. They photographed a man that they said was around 168. And if you actually go to National Geographic, Geographic and you get the article, you can see the photograph of this man. And it was the Soviet Union at the time, so they wouldn't allow them to interview him. And they obviously didn't have birth records, but they could get as close to 10 years above or below the age of the person. So he was at least 158. And people think that this is crazy and not true, but you take a magazine as respected as National Geographic, and it's kind of hard to deny that that's real. This man still walked out to the field that he used to plow and plant when he was a farmer. People go back to school. They get degrees at age 75. They start Mm -hmm. practicing yoga and teaching yoga. And, you know, there's just, you can keep adding to your bucket list. My bucket list started when I was born, (laughs) and it continues. Brilliant, brilliant. You know, my great grand aunt is 100 plus, and, you know, just two weeks ago she was dancing to ABBA. I'm just saying it's a mental state of awareness, and it's how you live your life, it's how you relate to others. And I know that as women we're confronted by many societal messages that can challenge our self worth and, and self esteem. How are yes. you able to really confront these challenges and, and maintain this sort of optimistic view that you have on life right now? I think it's a combination of things. One is educate yourself. Find out how and why women today feel the way they do. You have to look at the history of women. Well, for hundreds and hundreds of years in our society, we were valued for one thing only, and that was childbirth. It was only 100 years ago that we fought to get the vote. And since then, we have gotten into, you know, the workforce. And now we've come to a day where we are running for president. But we still have this kind of deep peace, you know, embedded in our psyche that we're still only valued for our childbearing years. If we at least look like we're in our childbearing years, then maybe we're going to get some attention and we're going to have some value. It's kind of like currency. And our media and our advertising has definitely, you know, kept that going because it makes a lot of money. (laughs) <laughs> the beauty it industry sure is making billions of dollars off of women fearing age. And yeah, if so you true. look at individual families or individual communities, it doesn't matter how old the woman is. She's going to get attention for all kinds of reasons, not just because she looks young, because she's witty, right. she's smart, she's capable, she's valuable. We know this about each other. But at the same time, we look in the mirror and we start getting nervous when we see those few gray hairs coming in or we start to get the crow's feet. And, (laughs) you know, so it's kind of like this double thing is going on at the same time. Be aware of it. Pay attention to it and talk about it. Talk about it with men and women and elders and children. Talk to people who are older than you and find out what works for them. Talk to people younger than you to see if they even care. You know, it's really fascinating. No, I agree with you because there's even a new campaign of a lot of celebrities who are now publicly showing themselves even not wearing makeup. And I think we've been so bombarded by a branding of consciousness that actually changes our story and 
just imagine looking at Beyonce, Alicia Keys, and a whole bunch of other people who are like going, I don't need makeup to define my beauty anymore. And so yes. I know that I you, love you know, it. I, me too. I just love it. And, you know, you are known for spearheading a movement that is entitled Pro-Age Revolution. And I want to know more about that because I think it's an important narrative to start to support. Because until we start to respect, especially as women, that growing old is one of the most beautiful, I shouldn't say old, but I always use the word growing in our antiquity, is one of the most beautiful things because we hold ancient wisdom. I call it about continuing our lives, too. We're continuing our beautiful. lives. You know, beautiful. We're born beautiful. and we keep living until we're gone. And Bob Dylan said, "If you're not busy living, you're busy dying." You <laughs> know, so and true. yes, in the end, we're gonna go. But I say, go out used up and fulfilled and gratified, and go for everything you want. Go for your pleasure. Go for what feels good. You know, we're women. We are pleasure-oriented creatures. We function through our feelings and our intuition, and we often feel that we have to function through more of a male standard because we're born into a predominantly male-driven society, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the history of our society and the way you know we've done it as Westerners, and that is definitely shifting, and I think we've hit a tipping point. And I think that's why we're now seeing these people in the media changing things. And they want to represent yeah. something different. You know, yeah, we don't want bigger. to be told. Yeah, something, something bigger. much bigger. And it's time. Yeah. And I, I called it the pro-age revolution because I think we've hit an all-time high of ageism in our society. Right. People are harming themselves by trying to make their bodies look younger than they really are. And... I really feel for all women that dye their hair, go for the Botox and all that. I think you do have to honor yourself and do what feels right to you. And all I do is I suggest to my sisters and my girlfriends is check what is motivating you. Is it fear Mm, or is it fun? Mm, I like that. It makes a big difference because you can dress up, you can have on all the right hair, clothes, makeup, etc., and not feel or look attractive if you were motivated to do all that out of some kind of fear or desperation. You can also, you know, have greasy hair and race to the grocery store to pick up food for the party tonight and you're real excited about it and somebody bumps into you and says, oh my gosh, you look so fabulous. What have you done? And you look in the mirror (laughs) thinking, what? Well, you're charged up. You're happy. You're excited about this party that you're planning. And the enthusiasm and the joy and the gusto for life and I think is what really makes a woman attractive. I like that. circulation I like that very stuff. much. Yeah. And what happens, I think, as women, when we get together and we do see our strengths, I think it's so important to applaud it and to support it and build it. And I know that we are moving more towards that. As you were speaking about, you know, this being a male-dominated world, I was thinking to myself, what has driven me in my life? Is it that I was trying to match what the male energy is like or, or trying to, you know, overcome the barriers that they've promoted and made us believe in? And I can personally say, and I hope I'm speaking to some of my fans and the audience that I think it was just an energy inside of me that was emerging beyond my attachment to my gender, that I could even change four tires on my car if I wanted to, that I could race cars if I wanted to, which I actually do as my hobby, and that I could do the things that I'm feeling is an emergence in me without feeling that I'm dominating the male gender or trying to prove to them that I'm just as good. And I sometimes get concerned, Cindy, about the languaging that we use as if we're trying to compete or telling them we are just as good as you. We're like, look, we're all God's kids, so I don't know what you're trying to prove, but what I do know that inside of me I feel like I can race cars. I feel like I could ride horses. I feel like I could run a multi-billion dollar corporation and be very comfortable in it. And I know that you have Mm -hmm. done it, you know. And Mm -hmm. where I think that it becomes a huge, a huge curve, and and I say this with all due respect to all genders, men just can't Mm -hmm. make babies. They can't have babies. And I think out of all the things that, you know, everyone can do, male and female, one of the biggest powers, and as you said earlier in the conversation, is we've been valued by the fact that we can give birth. 
And now we don't even need a man to even get pregnant, just to give you an idea of how it's going to be, I think, a wake-up call for everyone to perhaps sit in their power that be, you know, and just say we're all God's children. How do we exist and make this world a better place? you have any thoughts on that? Well, you said a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a lot, lot because it then. was, it is, <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm trying to get well, to, right? It's Yeah, I remember when I was growing up, I felt like I had to be disciplined and focused and I had to pick a path in life. And when I look back now, I see that I was, you know, a round peg or a square peg trying to stuff myself in a round hole and that I really didn't fit that picture. And that that was definitely more production success oriented, which is a more male oriented position. And when I started going for pleasure, it might be that my pleasure was to do something goal oriented or production oriented, but that's because it, I wanted to do it rather than I felt like I had to, like I had to fit into this role model. And now I'm so far past that, I'm just completely free. It's like being genderless. Because gender, so much of it is a role model. You know, we're much more similar than we are different. Mm -hmm. You know, our genitals are placed a little bit differently and all of that. We're basically all human beings. We all have spirits. We all have, you know, the whole package. And the differences can actually be fun. We can enjoy the differences rather than be frustrated with them or upset by them. And I look at the growth of, you know, the female community and the female culture over the past few hundred years. And we've already gone through the rebellion. We've already gone through the anger, women's lib and, you know, walking the streets with signs and, you know, saying, okay, now we are going to get equal pay, equal everything. Even though it's not 100% equal now, I think we see that anger doesn't work anymore. To really be self-possessed and know that we already have it, and it's just a matter of society catching up. It's really just a matter of logistics. I got that. So where can we find Boom if we want it? Well, thank you for asking, and I'm so proud of this company because it's really built on the message of pro-age. And women come together for a lot of different reasons. It could be a sweater sale or cosmetics. But once we get together, we start talking about very important things that matter to our future, to our great-grandchildren, to society and everything. And boom is that. It's a great, healthy, organic skincare line and a couple little cosmetics. And it's really about pro-age and all of us supporting each other in this pro-age revolution. And the products themselves, you can get online, go to boombycindyjoseph.com, and you can snoop around the website. There's philosophy, there's products, there's demo videos. The products are so simple to use that they need an explanation. People love the demo videos. There's one stick for color, and a happy woman is a colorful woman. When we get excited, our chelation revs up, and we get color wherever the capillaries are close to the surface. Our lips, our cheeks, our necks, our foreheads, everything gets kind of revved up with color. And that's what Boomstick Color is all about. It's one stick, and it actually works for every skin tone, from the darkest to the lightest. And people cross their arms and turn their heads and look very suspiciously at me when I say that. And I say, try it for yourself. It's quite amazing. It's sheer enough so your skin tone comes through and customizes it for you. So it really works on all complexions. So that's simple. That's easy. If you want to get it for a girlfriend, you don't have to think, oh, which color does she want? Because there's only one color there. And then there's a stick for a little bling and a little radiance that's boomstick glimmer and then there's another boomstick for moisturizing so there's a little boomstick trio great for travel and um the skincare is basically one moisturizer for your whole body from head to toe and another one that's not quite as shiny for those that like a little matte look boom Mm -hmm. cotton so there's boom silk boom cotton and um yeah go to the website and check it out Cindy Joseph, you are an an inspiration, and we'd like to thank you for joining us on the air today. And lots of continued success with Boomstick and everything else that you're doing. I just adore your spirit. 
refreshing. Well, thank you so much. You are a lovely woman, and it was wonderful to be introduced to you through your wonderful show, and I can't wait to see your aunt. I'm going online now to see mm-hmm. this lovely woman who's <laughs> over 100 years old. Yeah, Daddy, D-A-D-I, Janky, J-A-N-K-I. She's remarkable. Wonderful. I'm really looking forward to seeing her and, you know, meeting her through your website and this show. You're doing wonderful things. Thank you so much. Many blessings your way. Take care. So we can be proactive in the way that we choose to visualize ourselves. You heard it from Cindy herself that it's time for us to really look at ourselves from I don't know, not the way that we've been marketed to ourselves anymore. I think that we are also getting to that point anyway, to be called to come from in out. And wow, I can't wait to get a a copy of that stick to see how that works. I think that's incredible and ingenious too. Thank you all for joining us. Remember, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission. And we are here to love each other the same. So let's do that. So let's kick up our feet and dance away and celebrate being ageful. How's that? Take care, everyone. All the very best.